Dajia hao, what does Dwight Schrute from The Office, Chopstick Dart Throwing, and Jet Li have in common? You're about to find out. Let's go! In a previous video where I shared about my wushu training history, click right there for that, I said that if anyone was interested, I would share the story about how I found wushu in the first place. And since the super awesome Rebecca Chin asked for more details, that's what you're getting in this video. And honestly, I don't personally find this story that interesting, but I do get asked this sometimes, and so I thought it'd be really helpful to have a video that I could refer people to if they want to know more about how I found out about Wushu in the first place. So my journey with martial arts really starts around 14 or 15 years old. I was living in the east side of Seattle, and I had started watching the Saturday morning Kung Fu Theater on TV. And I just fell in love with all these old Shaw Brother movies and Golden Harvest movies, Five Element Ninjas, all that kind of cool old school Kung Fu movie stuff. So when a friend of mine mentioned that he was taking karate in the university district, I immediately got interested. I asked for more information, and it turns out that he was training with this really tiny small black woman with incredible power who was teaching a hybrid style called Karajufu, which stood for Karate Judo Kung Fu. Now, normally when you hear about a hybrid style, you immediately run the other direction. But she had actually trained from a really young age, really intensely in Chicago in these different styles and had certifications and black belts in all of them. So I started training there. And the friend that I mentioned that referred me, his name was Rain Wilson. And you guys might know him as Dwight Schrute from The Office. First person to three wins, all right? Yes, Sensei. At the time, he was an undergrad at the University of Washington. And we were both Baha'is and our fathers also knew each other. So that's how we met originally. And I used to go over to his apartment, hang out sometimes. But for about six months to a year, we were training together at this school. And that's where I really started to enjoy the process of moving my body in a certain way. And because I was so young, it was much easier for me to get flexible. I had really nice roundhouse kicks. I could kick really high. I could get my like shins right to my my head I was a lot thinner then <laughs> but I didn't keep at it by the time I was 16 years old I had already left to do other things my next experience with martial arts was at the age of 17 that summer I'd gone to Japan for a part-time job in Tokyo and the family I was staying with at the time their son had collected a couple martial arts related films now I had heard Jackie Chan's name somewhere or another but I hadn't really seen any of his films until I went there and they had a copy of My Lucky Stars and just the action sequences in that film, although they're rather sparse compared to other Jackie Chan films I later found out, it was still pretty amazing to watch. And they also had another film. In Japanese, the name is Arahan, but in English, it's Shaolin Temple 3 Martial Arts of Shaolin, Nanbei Shaolin. Now, I didn't know who Jet Li was at the time or who Jin Chang or anyone, but that movie really blew my mind. It was the first time I'd seen modern wushu in a film and it was inspiring. I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know that it was modern wushu, but I knew that that was really, really cool stuff. The next year while I was in Japan, I picked up the Japanese version of Meals on Wheels, which is called Spartan X. And I have to say the Japanese version soundtrack is way better than the Chinese version soundtrack. If you ever get your hands on Spartan X in Japan, Meals on Wheels, check it out. It actually has really good English dubbing and a way better soundtrack. It's a great film. I definitely check it out. The next experience I had was at the age of 20. While I was browsing at Tower Records, or it might have been Blockbuster, I was looking at the martial arts section in the VHS tapes. This is before DVDs. And I saw a film called Iron and Silk. And on the cover was someone doing some sort of martial art pose. With, and I was like, oh, that looks kind of cool. I checked it out, took it home. And little did I know that that movie would introduce me to the word wushu. This is The movie was sort of a semi-autobiographical tale about Mark Saltzman, and the movie is Mark Jackson, but he plays the same character. And in 1984, he went to China as one of the first Westerners to go there to teach English. And while he was there, he went under the tutelage of Pan Qingfu, who was a martial arts instructor. And I think the movie takes place in Hangzhou, but I forget if that's actually where he trained. Han Ching Fu later ended up immigrating to Canada. If you were around back in the late 90s, you probably saw him demo with his very bright silks. So I had the word wushu. I know what wushu was in my head. That's the style that I was interested in. At the age of 21, when I was walking around Rose Hill, which is kind of between Kirkland and Redmond, I found a martial arts school for a Korean style I had never heard of called Jungae Musul. And I'd never heard of it because it was a style created by the school owner. Now, again, when you hear style created by a school owner, you usually want to run the other direction. But this guy was also 
actually legitimate. He had trained really intensely under his father in Korea. He went to Hong Kong, he studied a bunch of different styles of martial art, and he decided to take the best elements of each one and combine it into a holistic style. So it had all these different weapons from Korean, Chinese, Japanese styles. It had a lot of different techniques, but he drilled it down to like the core essential techniques of each style and what was similar among each style. So it was sort of a hybrid version of many different martial arts. So I trained there for maybe three to six months, not a long time. But one of the things they did there, they had these 18 different weapons you could learn, kind of like the traditional 18 weapons, but different. And one of them, they had a styrofoam pad up on the wall and they had sharpened chopsticks, like from a restaurant, wooden, long wooden chopsticks. And you'd practice throwing them and figuring out the rotation necessary to get the chopstick to stick into the wall. That wasn't the hard part. It's actually pretty easy. Once you know how far away you are and how many rotations it would take, you know which side of the chopstick to, to grab it from and then how to flick it and it would stick in the wall. Really amazingly, one time I was there and I stuck one in the wall and I was there with a, like a student instructor. He had gone in the other room for a minute and I threw a second one and it pierced through like Hawkeye from the Avengers. It pierced through the first chopsticks and I split one chopstick with the other. And I was like, oh my God. That's, it's gotta be like a one in a million. Then he came back in the room, I was like, dude, check out what I did. And he looked at it and he goes, did you really do that or you just set that up? Cause he wasn't there, he didn't see it, I was by myself. But I swear I really did do it. And I would never be able to do it again, so it was a fluke, but it was pretty cool. I can say I split a chopstick with another chopstick. That might be the biggest achievement in my martial arts career. The other thing I learned from that school is who Jet Li was, or rather about the movie Shaolin Temple. You see, in the movie Iron and Silk, Mart Saltzman mentions that Pan Ching Fu was an extra or a bad guy in the movie Shaolin Temple, that it was his favorite movie. I'd never heard of it, so I wasn't really familiar, but they had a small scene from that movie in black and white in the Iron and Silk film. I happened to be there one day when some students after class were watching a small TV in the corner and that movie was playing and I was like, what is that film? I really want, I, I, that, I saw that film in another film, I wanna know what that film is. And they said, oh, it's Shaolin Temple with Jet, and with Jet Li. Um, I don't even know if they said his name, but they said, oh, it's Shaolin Temple. And I was like, oh my God, that thing's amazing. So I watched, watched the whole thing right there. And I was like, this stuff is fantastic. And that may be why I ended up leaving that school because I knew it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. When I was 23, I first learned the name Jet Li. There was one of those independent small theaters in the university district that I used to go to. And on their calendar of movies, they had Thursday night was like a martial arts movie night. And on there was a movie with someone called Jet Li. I'd never heard of Jet Li, but it sounded like interesting because I like Hong Kong movies. It was called Once Upon a Time in China 3. Now, this movie isn't considered to be one of his better movies. It's probably considered the worst one out of the Once Upon a Time in China series, except maybe the one in America. To me, who had never really seen a contemporary Jet Li film at the time, it blew my mind. I was like, this is what I want to do. What is this? I didn't even realize at the time that he was the same actor that was in Shaolin Temple. And this sent me into a deep Hong Kong movie dive to see all the stuff I could find that was more current and modern because all the stuff I was familiar with was either early 90s, late 80s Jackie Chan stuff around the police story, My Lucky Star Days, or it was period Shaw Brothers kind of movies. So I watched every Jet Li and Jackie Chan or martial art film that came to that theater. I would go to Chinatown or the International District in Seattle and scour the shelves for things. I didn't know what I was looking for and I didn't even know what I was looking at. I mean, seriously, you guys today with the internet, you have it so good. You have no idea. You older folks know what I'm talking about, but man, it was hard to find information back then. There are two movies when I was 24 that notably changed my life and perspective. First was Drunken Master 2, which you all know is a fantastic movie, but when you're watching in the theater for the first time in 1994, the year it came out, it was mind blowing. My friend David and I, we left the theater, turned around and went right back in and got the next showing. The other film, was probably my favorite Jet Li film of all time was Fist of Legend. Now, it's not everyone's favorite film, but for me, it really resonated with me. Maybe because I'm half Japanese and he spends time in Japan. Maybe because the message is really good. Maybe because his outfit's really nice. Maybe it's just a great film, I don't know. So since I knew the word Wushu, and I knew kind of what it looked like, I started going around Seattle to all the martial arts schools I could find that taught Chinese martial arts to see if they did Wushu, and they didn't. Some of them didn't even really know what Wushu was. I said, I want to learn Chinese martial arts, I want to learn Wushu, and they go, well, we teach Kung Fu. And I went to some of the traditional schools there and looked at their stuff, but the Hungar, the Choi Foot, or the Yang style Taiji, those weren't what I was looking for at all. I found out later that I had totally missed the Wushu boat. There was a teacher there before I was there that was teaching Wushu, and he had since left Seattle. And I left Seattle right before Hong Yijiao went to Seattle and started teaching there. 
So I was at that weird in between point of the early 90s when there was no one teaching wushu in Seattle. But since there's no wushu in Seattle, I decided to move to a place that would probably have it. Now keep in mind, no internet, and it wasn't possible for me to find every phone book for every town in, in the world, but I had a good idea that the San Francisco Bay Area, since it had the largest Chinatown on the West Coast, would probably be the place where I would find some wushu. There was no wushu stuff back then. Wushu wasn't known. Most martial artists had never even heard of wushu. So, I mean, compared to those dark ages, wushu has really come a long way in terms of recognizability and awareness and marketing. It still has a long way to go but it's at least not as bad as it used to be. So I moved to the Bay Area. I had only been there once before in my life, found a small $400 studio apartment on Knob Hill in San Francisco, started, got a temp job and just started working. And I started going to different martial arts schools I found in the phone book to see what they had. I wasn't familiar with the city, so I would just kind of go to different neighborhoods and see what was around. So it was still hard to find information. So I'd go in the phone book, look at martial arts, karate and other martial arts and I would find this Choli Foot School or a Seven Star Praying Mana School, but none of it was Wushu. But unlike Seattle, they had heard of Wushu. I found a listing in the phone book for a company called Wushu Resources. It was just one line with a phone number. So I called the phone number and the young girl's voice answered and said, oh, I'm sorry, my dad's not home right now. That didn't bode well for me, but I later found out that was Marla Fong, daughter of Sifu Brian Fong from Cal Wushu and San Francisco Wushu. I almost ended up training with them, but alas, destiny had other plans for me. In the first week of March of 1995, I was sitting at my desk and the person next to me had one of those independent newspapers and on one page I saw out of the corner of my eye someone in a pose and I looked and it was a woman standing upright holding her foot up here and holding a straight sword in the other hand and I was like that's wushu so I asked her to take a look at it I cut out the ad in the paper and I was so excited because the name of the school was wushu west and I knew I had found a school that actually taught wushu when I got home, I immediately called the phone number. I got a voicemail, so I left a message. Someone called me back, it was a woman. She goes, hi, you wanted to know information about classes? And I said, yeah, I'd like to know more about Wushu. Uh, can I speak to the teacher? And she goes, yeah, I'm the teacher. Now it turns out I was talking to Mother Love and Hao Zhihua, AKA Patty Lee, from the Beijing Wushu team. On the flyer, it said she had been a teammate of Jet Li's and that she was the three-time all-around champion of China. So just based on the ad, I knew she was legitimate, but I really wanted to find out and learn more. I asked her if it was okay for me to come and check out the class. She said, yeah, we have class on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And I said, well, I work during the week, so Sunday's probably the best. So I went there and I watched the class and I met her and it was amazing. I was like, I wanna do this. I wanna sign up. Can I, can I come to the next class? And so we agreed once a week was probably good to start with, but she was actually going out of town the next week to judge team trials and said that somebody else would be teaching the class, but I was welcome to join in for my first class with that person. So I did, I came back a week later, March 12th, 1995, 9.30 a.m. Sunday, 1477 San Pablo Avenue in Berkeley, California. And the guy who taught the class, I'd never saw him again. I guess he was an older student from before and he just, she just asked him to fill in while she was gone for one day. I'd never seen him before. I never saw him again, but he taught the first class and I was totally hooked. I was like, this is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted to learn. Apparently it took one class with one stranger to know this. It was interesting for that first year, I had a wall calendar with every day on it and I would mark down every day that I took a class. So you could have asked me at any time in that first year, how many hours I had taken Wushu and I could have told you exactly how many hours and minutes I had trained Wushu in. Around the same time before my first class, I saw a flyer in the window of a shop that was advertising a performance by the Beijing Wushu team that would be held on March 18th. I immediately bought tickets. Turned out the only ones available were in the back row at the Palace of Fine Arts. Literally the back row, the wall was right behind me. The tickets were $18, but it was a steal even though I barely had $18 to my name at the time. And even though I could barely see anything, what I could see blew my mind. It was amazing. So I think the combination of falling in love with doing Wushu with the combination of seeing that level of high quality professional wushu it just sucked me in there was no looking back after that point and that's basically how i found wushu it's a lot of dumb luck a lot of coincidence a lot of perseverance i mean it i didn't admit it at the time but the reason i moved to california was to find wushu i may not have even admitted it to myself but that's really why i did it and i think a lot of people might not have done that they wouldn't have moved to another state where they had really never been before to a city they didn't know at all to find a sport that was unfindable thanks to no internet keep looking the whole time for six months until they found the school that taught the style. I give kudos to the younger version of myself to being that committed to finding the school because 
I really appreciate all that effort he made back then. You know, going back to Hao Zhihua or Patty Lee as she's known, I, I don't think I really realized at the time how lucky I was to find her as my coach. I mean, I felt lucky finding a Wushu teacher in a Wushu school in the first place, but I really didn't have any idea who she was or what her background was aside from three-time national champion, teammate of Jet Li. What that meant didn't sink in quite yet. But later I found out she wasn't just the national champion and the teammate of Jet Li. She was the only woman in history to ever get six gold and one silver at a single national competition. You see, back in the 80s, they had to compete in seven different events. To be an all-around champion, they really had to be all around. You competed in open hand, short weapon, long weapon, traditional weapon, traditional open hand. Wait, how many is that? Five. And Dui Lian and internal. So she did Chang Tuen, Staff, Dao Shu, Eagle Claw, Double Broad Sword, Dui Lian, Three Person Dui Lian, and Chen Style Tai Chi. Or it might have been Bagua, I forget. She did both. So it's hard to remember which one she competed with. In that competition, which I believe was 83 or 84 All China Games, she got six gold medals and one silver, which was in Staff. Thinking about that now is ridiculous. Who sweeps the board like that? Because the competition formats changed so much since then, it'll never happen again. But like, at the time when I was training with her, I didn't realize it then, just how much of a badass she is. I mean, I could see her wushu, but I was so new to wushu that I didn't know what really what I was looking at. I could just tell that it looked good. But now I am extremely grateful that she was my first teacher, and that I had such a unique opportunity to train with someone with her background. It has led to so many things and changed my life in so many significant ways. It's almost incomprehensible. And it also laid for me the foundation of what I think is probably one of the most important aspects of Wushu. And what is that? Well, it's actually a longer topic than I have time for right now. So I'm going to save that for another video. It's probably not what you're thinking. It isn't training. I don't necessarily think training is the most important aspect of Wushu. So I know it's terrible for me to do this, but I'm going to talk about it later, probably next week. Anyway, thanks so much for sharing this journey with me down memory lane. I know it's not that interesting. It's not watching cool Wushu videos. It's not Wushu training. But it's a story that's important because it laid the foundation for how I approach Wushu and what I did with Wushu from that point forward. But if there's anything you have questions about, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time. In my next video, which will come out on Tuesday, I'll be doing my week three recap. So until then, train hard. Jayo. By the way, check it out. My carbon fiber Nangun came in. Woo! It's awesome. I cannot wait to start training with that thing. I also got towel grips for my Nandao. I'm still waiting for the other grips to put under the towel grips, but it's close. Too much coffee. <laughs>